Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to call this the uh, Contrarian Cards Podcast Episode 1. Um, obviously, with this being a uh, small channel, still uh, sort of finding our, our way, so to speak, and just trying out different things. And that's, I think, a lot of the fun of it for me. So, um, yeah, I thought this, I, w I really want to get to some point where I can just kind of post a bit more consistently, even if it's... Um, uh, less frequent. So I thought this might be an opportunity to just sort of do that, maybe hopefully on a weekly basis. And I think what I'm going to do is just try, try to post these once a week, like on Friday mornings or something like that. Um, I think it'll be a way to sort of just, you know, talk about broad topics, show cards, you know, mail days, review sort of like the pulse of the hobby type stuff. Um, and just sort of freestyle about whatever. So yeah, I think that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. Um, for context, right now it's Tuesday morning, um, the day after Halloween. Uh, just got a little break here that I'm going to try to squeeze this in. And I think if I release it on Fridays, that'll sort of give me the whole, the flexibility of the entire week leading up to that to try to find, you know, a half an hour to 45 minutes to sort of sort of get it in um, and all that type of thing. So yeah, so that's a little bit of an introduction. I've got some loose sort of sort of two main segments planned. The first is just gonna be sort of reviewing pickups. Um, I think what I'll do uh, is just kind of, you know, whatever I've picked up since the last podcast, kind of go over it here and there and sort of talk about the cards specifically. And then I wanna go over, um, as we're doing that, we're just gonna sort of talk about the pulse of each category. Uh, nothing specific, no, you know, hard data or anything, just sort of my overall feeling personally about uh, the, the specific categories and just how, you know, how I'm, you know, approaching them and that type of thing. And then, um, you know, probably review some of the community poll questions that have posted and the results of those. I think that'll be interesting. And then just sort of lead into whatever sort of freestyle topic kind of comes to mind just organically over the course of the show. So, all right, with that being said, start off with some recent pickups. I think this is an interesting one because it's a card I actually recently sold and reacquired. Um, this is the uh, 05 Finest Gold um, Ray Lewis Refractor. Um, this is a stunning card. So I had owned a copy of this raw um, that I bought a while back when I was sort of on my Ray Lewis uh, kick. I just felt like he was a really undervalued player. Um, in the hobby uh i would put him pretty easily you know in my top 15 players of all time in the history of football um but because obviously he's a defensive player and price wise he's just super uh super affordable so for context i i you know i got to a point where i'm like man i just uh, there's other stuff i want to buy i just can't pc all these guys so uh, you know i'm just gonna sell out my you know my big ray lewis cards and kind of just move on and once I sold my 05 and my 06 Finest Gold, I'm like, all right, that's, you know, that's good enough for me. I sold most of my smaller ones. I had like an 04 black out of 100 um, and that type of thing. But, but yeah, um, I sold and then, but the, where it comes back around is I bought this raw on Comp C, the 2010 Finest Gold and the 2011 Crystal Atomic. I actually had two of these and I sent all three of these cards to SGC. And they all got tens. Uh, I sold one of the Crystal Atomics for like eighty bucks. Uh, I had both these posted on eBay for a while, but then I was kind of thinking about it. I'm like, I think I'm sort of developing this like you know pretty strong connection to these like raw cards that I'm like grading myself. Um, and then obviously when they come back in high grade, all the better. So I was kind of at a at a crossroads where I'm like, man, I I still really I like the value presented by you know Ray Lewis, and I also have a, a pretty strong Ed Reed position with like rare parallels and that type of thing. So I'm like, I I don't know if I really want to give up on this, but I don't feel like comfortable like necessarily moving forward with like continuing to collect him. You know, when I could just put that money into you know Peyton Manning, Marvin Harrison. Uh, Ed Reed, you know, and then, you know, obviously all my other, you know, card categories and that type of thing. So I was really just at a crossroads. And then I saw this one come up on eBay. I'm like, all right, well, this is sort of a now or never type decision. I'm either going to buy this card and just sort of continue to move forward with Ray Lewis as part of my collection, 
or I'm just gonna let it go and I'm gonna sell out of these other two. But I really, really felt a strong connection to these other two cards and I didn't wanna let them go. So I'm like, all right, let's see if I can get a deal on it. I ended up buying this for basically the exact same price I sold that raw copy for after tax. So, and now it's and now it's kind of interesting. I see that raw copy I sold is actually back on the market for at auction. So I, I, I can't remember if I, I wanna say I sold it for like 170. Um, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see if that one, uh, what that fetches at auction, but, but yeah, that was, it was just sort of a, sort of a, a weird thing how you see a lot of these rare cars coming, coming back to market and, um, it's just not a card I, I thought I would have a chance to buy again. And I actually saw a gold X fractor out of 10 raw from, you know, that was 05. It sold for about a hundred and. $60, $160, I think it got listed as, as a buy it now, and I almost bought that one, but I decided to hold off and just, you know, I just passed on it, and then somebody else bought it right away, but yeah, that was one of the more uh, interesting pickups of the last last few weeks, so, and then um, staying on, let's stay on the football, um, we'll kind of talk broadly, so I'm finding myself just really having a lot of fun with this old... Um, Early 2000s cult stuff, obviously being a Colts fan. And these Donruss Elite Parallels, the aspirations and status uh, really, just really do it for me. Awesome shine. Cool texture as well. You're probably not going to be able to see it with the glare, but there's like a um, kind of a little like effect uh, there. You can kind of see it's sort of like... Um, I don't know, it just has a little interesting, you really have to see it in person, but it's got a cool element to it. Obviously die cut. So status and elite, um, the status is gonna be to the player's jersey number, so 88 for Marv, and then the uh, aspirations is gonna be 100 minus the jersey number, so 12. So the higher the number, the lower the aspirate. It's gonna be like inverse. So if this was Peyton Manning, the status would be more rare because that would be to 18. The aspirations would be to... Um, a hundred would be to uh, 88. Yeah, the aspirations would be to 88, because, or no, it would be to 82, 82. Um, so it would just be flipped. So, but yeah, uh, having a ton of fun collecting those. Uh, that's really this, I mean, that's kind of always the segment of football I'm, you know, doing the most damage in. Uh, I sold, I sold my Unitas uh, 57 rookie, uh, and really, I only have one vintage football card left, and it's my 58 uh, Unitas, and that's just, I just held on to that because it's got just such great centering and just really good eye appeal. Um, yeah, and so I'm not, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just kind of targeting a lot of the scarcity, and especially a lot of the, like the value guys where, you know, you can get cards like this at a pretty, pretty good price. Um, picked up this Marvin Gold here from 03 Bowman. You know, this was, you know, I won this for like three times less than my max bid at like 25 bucks or something like that. And then I just, yeah, it just grabbed the 02 as well, actually. And that should be in the mail here soon. So I'll have the 01, the 02, and the 03. You know, Marvin Harrison, top five receiver all time. Uh, I'd put him, you know, behind Jerry Rice, of course, and then probably behind, um, maybe just a bit behind uh, uh, behind Moss. And then probably, you know, you got Fitzgerald up there. So I'd probably go Rice, Moss, Mar, Fitz, and then, you know, take your pick at five. But, um, but yeah, uh, you know, one of my favorite players of all time, you know, his kids at Ohio State now, I think that, you know, that's, that's interesting to see as well, what his, how his career is gonna play out and that type of thing. So picking up cards like that for like 20 bucks, 30 bucks, it just seems like a no-brainer. Um, yeah, and then football, you know, everything is down, obviously. Uh, so many rare cards have come to market. So many options are out there just sitting as buy now is coming to auction, going low. Last night I put in a, you know, a mega bid on a on a football, a really rare football card, and it literally won it for my mega bid was like about four times four times what the actual sold price ended up being. So that's the kind of stuff you're dealing with right now. And, you know, obviously as a seller, uh, you have to, you know, balance that out and you just find a way to navigate it or whatever. But, you know, as a buyer, there's just so many opportunities. It's unreal. Um, yeah, and that's 
kind of, you know, where that all stands. Let me see if I got any other football cards here before we move on. No, that'll do it for football. So yeah, summarizing, just having a ton of fun with the early 2000s stuff, um, especially all my Colts guys, and then a little bit of Ed Reed, uh, Ray Lewis, of course. So, all right, let's look at some, let's see, what do I got for wrestling here? And since this is gonna be longer form shows, you know, I do, um, I do have three dogs. I'll try to find a time to do it when they're quiet, but you know, there's always a chance that they're just going to go nuts. And you know, with this again, being long form, I'm just not going to have the opportunity to stop and restart and that kind of thing. But so yeah, apologies in advance if that happens, but hopefully it doesn't. All right. High tech. So this Juan Soto, uh, portrait tech, um, these are out of 50, uh, I've been messing with high tech a little bit in baseball. Obviously, I've had, done a lot with it in Star Wars, but uh, now just dipping my toe into the baseball uh, high-tech cards, which has been really fun. So these, the interesting thing about these high-tech inserts is they don't have base versions. You know, like normally if you're looking at Topps cards or whatever, you'll see, a, you know, they'll have a base and then a whatever color parallel, another color parallel, all that. So with this Portrait Tech, literally only 50 of these exist as far as I know. There might be like a lower numbered version, like a 25 or some other version or whatever. I'm not totally for sure, but um, but yeah, these are gnarly. Obviously, the backs of these cards are just insane. Um, yeah, I picked up this Soto, and then I got these two Mookie cards here. This uh, Jubilation, another high-tech insert. Um, just really, really aesthetically appealing cards. This was like $50. Back of it's just super fire. Um just really, really, really nice. And then this is a low numbered uh, parallel here. This is the Galactic Red Diffractor. Um, these are out of 10, out of 10 there. And again, this 2018 cool color match with the Red Sox uniform and then the back is just nuts. Those you know, rubies, that pattern. These are like a see-through acetate. Uh, very cool, very cool. Like when you get them in the light, um, just really stunning cards. I was sort of against them in sports for a while when I was doing all the Star Wars stuff with them. Um, but, you know, over time, they just sort of, you know, sort of grew on me more and more. And I'm just like, man, these are just really, really cool cards. Low numbered, um, you know, affordable, you know, less than, I think these were both like 50 or less, already slabbed, already graded. Um, so, yeah, just a ton of, it just seemed like a ton of great value uh, for me as a collector. So, yeah, baseball, same story as football. There was a little bit of a, you know, Topps Chrome just came out. Those logo fractors are really hot right now. And I think those are just probably generally overpriced. Um, I picked up the Lindor for like 25 bucks. Obviously not a ton of demand for his cards. And I got the True Gold here as well. Uh, quietly, very quietly building out just a really nice Lindor PC. Obviously I've got the, um, the Super Fractor and the gold from 22 Heritage, those would be kind of the cornerstones, but I've got like a ton of his golds now. I'd say probably close to like 10 from 2019, 2018, 2017, 2020, 20, I don't think I have any 21s, but, but yeah, it's uh, it, it's weird to me that, you know, um, I was doing, I watched one of the, uh, uh, I really appreciated the video from Scotty B Cards the other day on the war tool, and I, I think that is a really great resource, and it's something I... I don't, um, you know, I don't go on there all the time and use it, but I've used it a lot in the past just to sort of give you a really good grasp of um, how these guys are doing just in terms of, uh, you know, progression relative to their age. And if you look at Lindor, and I, I comp him with Bryce Harper, Machado, and, and Betts, um, and I, I apologize, I don't remember right off the top of my head um, the exact numbers, but you know, year to year, those guys, uh, he's right there with all those guys. Um, and to me, just again, it, and this is just as, as a collector, I'm not expecting these cards to like appreciate in value tomorrow or the next day or a year from now. It's just, that's it's just, you know, for 20 bucks, 20 bucks, you know, it's just, it makes just a lot of sense for me. Um, and then I've got, uh, I got one of his high tech cards here as well. I just, I bought this a while back, but I thought it was relevant just for this for this video. Again, you know, it's out of 10. Cool pattern. Um, I think this was probably like $12 or less. Eight, nine, ten dollars. So that'll look great in a case eventually, but just a really fun side PC. And it's actually becoming I would venture to say, you know, as far as like rare parallels go, I, I I'm 
quietly building out, you know, one of the, uh, probably one of the more uh, interesting Francisco Lindor, uh, rare, scarce parallel PCs. Uh, and it's just, that's, you know, that's kind of for me, you know, sort of where I, where I want to be with it. I'm, I'm not targeting really any of his rookie cards or anything like that. Um, just really looking at the low numbered, uh, good aesthetic, um, you know, all that kind of thing. So, so yeah, baseball, again, nothing really has changed for me. Uh, I'll be looking to target, you know, a lot of the guys I collect in the off season, the Otani's, Mookie, uh, Francisco Lindor, a little bit. Of, I just picked up at the Grom, uh, gold wave the other day for like 10, 15 bucks from 21, Finally got a, uh, I finally found a Bryce Harper 2020 gold uh, finest. Picked that up on Comp C. That's on the way. Uh, I'm really, I actually sold my 2020 Topps Chrome gold wave Bryce Harper a few months ago, and I'm really regretting that now. Uh, just based solely, I would like to have that card during this postseason run that he's on. As of the recording of this video, that series is 1-1. Headed back to Philly. The game was postponed last night, but yeah, I uh, definitely had to. Definitely had to pick up a car just to sort of commemorate this. Who knows if they'll close it out or not. I mean, the Astros, for all intents and purposes, should win that series. But you never know. The Phillies are hot and it might just be their year. So that would be interesting to see. I have no position in Bryce Harper as far as, like, uh, PC goes. Which is, you know, I, I just have sort of chosen other guys over him. You know, again, Mookie plays defense. Francisco Lindor plays defense. Um, Otani is just unreal. Hits, pitches. Uh, Soto, younger. And it's just with, with Bryce Harper not contributing to his war uh, as a defensive player and, and that type of thing, it's just, I, I don't know. I don't know how long. I don't know if he can keep pace with all those guys. I, he has the two MVPs, obviously, which is a major, major big deal. Uh, if they do win the World Series this year and it's on his shoulders, that is really just going to sort of cement his legacy uh, as far as all that goes. But that still, that doesn't mean that his cards are always going to be expensive. Even, you know, a few months from now uh, with all the economic, you know, issues and all this types of all these types of things. It's just I, I just still just think there's going to be uh, there's going to be opportunities on all these guys for a long time. And that's when you can go back, you know. And by, okay, so let's say Marvin Harrison's the fourth or fifth greatest receiver of all time. And you can go back 20 years later and buy one of his most, I've, ne I've literally never seen one of these come up on eBay. And granted, I haven't been looking at it, you know, or haven't been looking for it for, for years. But, um, you know, that card cost $25. So why, why I, I feel no, no sense of urgency to overpay for for anything for any active player if that makes sense so um you know this this Mookie Betts card out of 10 you know for for 40 dollars or so I, I think that's reasonable but um I, I would definitely you know for that 2020 finest gold harper I think it was like 30 dollars and I'm probably overpaying even at that price all things considered uh just given the patterns and how these things play out when you have you know this is probably one of Ray Lewis's most high awareness high demand uh, parallels just because 06 is such a popular popular year for the set. It's the gold, all that type of thing. You know, to buy it already graded uh, almost 20 years later for $170, you just get that sort of perspective of like, okay, like um, even established guy, quote unquote established guys like Harper, like Mookie, like Soto, like Lindor, they're still the, the patterns of the hobby and the patterns of prices within the hobby, I mean, you can still go get Peyton Manning gold refractors for, you know, two, 300. I have, I have my 08 Peyton gold listed on eBay right now for $200. And it literally has like one watcher. There's just right now, just no demand. Um, and it's just, there are so many options and that's just really the theme of the hobby for me. Um, and it's, it's some, it, it can be easy to, um, get that perception of value, uh, as far as like this versus that, that versus this, this player versus that player there, you know, this is this, all this, it's gone down this much, it's gone up this much, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, there, I just, there's, there's just always options. There's literally always thousands and thousands of rare, beautiful, scarce, 
uh, quote unquote underpriced cards. And um, yeah, I, I think, I don't know, it'll be interesting to see um, what, what, you know, I have a lot of confidence in a card like this as far as being able to sell it, you know, for $35 if I wanted to. Um, these logo fractors from the, from this set, you know, I, the, I've seen the Otanis go up over like three, $400 to me. That's, that's a, that's a bit much because, you know, I, it, it's just that there's a lot of years to go, a lot of cards to be made and a lot of competition as far as, as far as price goes. So, so yeah, that might, maybe that'll be the theme of this episode. There are so many, I think that might be the, that might be the title. Okay. So, all right. So that's baseball. A lot of this, a lot of that sort of a deal. Uh, let's look at Star Wars. Uh, picked up a few, a few cool cards here. Um, got the gold and the orange, uh, the ray. I just think this is such a dynamic card. Uh, awesome image. I think I picked these up for uh, 200 for the pair. I just sold an SGC 9.5 of the gold for uh, like a hundred bucks. You know, I've had, I've owned five of these now. I'm trying to get a 10. I just sent in my third copy to be graded. So far I've got two 9.5s, sold one, kept one. Um, I'll send in the orange as well. And I have a black as well to send in. Uh, I'll just keep selling the 9.5s and then hopefully eventually I'll get a 10, but I'm just sending in one at a time in whatever order I submit. So we'll see on that. I think the oranges look great in this set, actually. I'm usually not an orange refractor guy, but the orange uh, the orange really pops in this set, like really nice, actually. So I, th I might kind of keep that in mind if I see a couple other cards that I want to get, but that's the Star Wars. Uh, I've got this red, too. A scene card from 2021 Legacy. I've got the black 10 uh, as well, and I've got, obviously, I've got the red, the actual Ray Skywalker card, so... Just added that to the PC. This came up at $75. I just thought that was an auto buy uh, at that price. We got the Omega 5 of 5, so that's always a bonus. Um, so yeah, really cool card there. That scene, you know, after the fight or during the fight when she's like past, knocked out or whatever, and they're all the you get all the old uh, Jedi uh, voices talking to her. I thought that was really cool. So just a you know aesthetically a solid card, five of five, good price, all that kind of thing. So Star Wars. Still, it still seems like there's a lot of demand. I know the Galaxy set got pushed back a little bit to uh, December, maybe. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely things have slowed down considerably relative to where they were a couple months ago, I would say. But still, you know, still a lot of interest. Uh, some pretty strong sales. I saw an Anakin Black go for, uh, what was it? Close to, close to 200 from 2022 Finest. So. And I think uh, some gold Vaders have went off recently as well. But but yeah, I would say of all my card collecting categories, Star Wars remains the hottest. Um, probably the most demand relative to, I don't know, the, the Hall of Fame football. Hall of Fame football seems to have a little bit of liquidity to it. Not much, but a little bit. Um, but I would say all in all, Star Wars probably definitely still has the most heat. Um and then the opposite of that, the coldest by far, I would say, is wrestling. I picked up these. Uh, I got the 2021 black Sami Zayn. got the 2020 gold um, Jimmy Uso. I got the J as well and the J black from 2020. I love 2020 chrome gold. So those are just awesome. Um, Sammy is just so over right now. Like the crowd, like this is Raw was on last night and Roman came out to do his thing and the crowd was just so hot for Sammy, like all the Usi stuff, all the honorary Us stuff, all the, you know, all the stuff with him and Jay. It's just they have really hit on that, and it's just been so awesome because Sammy's just so entertaining and so so charismatic, and it just they've really they've really struck a chord with the audience. So I, I picked that up for like twenty bucks. I think the the pr the asking price was like eighty five dollars, and I just sent a super low ball offer. It was like twenty bucks or something, and the guy accepted it. So that's that's another thing. Don't ever be afraid to send people low ball offers. I get low ball offers all the time, and I am never offended because I do the exact same thing. The price is it's all about perception. You know, I might price I might value this Mookie Betts card out of ten at three hundred dollars somebody might send me an offer for forty five dollars and i might accept it you know what i mean like i'm i probably i definitely won't but just an example like 
don't ever don't ever be afraid of hurting somebody's feelings on eBay. Okay, like as a person that sells like a lot of cards, like if it's just completely ridiculous, I just ignore it. You know, um, maybe don't ever send an offer for like a dollar or two dollars on like a on like a you know a twenty dollar card because at that point it's just complete a complete waste of time because the shipping's going to cost the seller more than that. But but yeah, you know if, if if they want 20 bucks for it, they can, they can have it. And there it is. But, but yeah. And then on the Jimmy, I think that was, you know, five, six, seven, ten dollar $10 card. I don't remember, but yeah, happy to pair that up with Jay. Um, wrestling, uh, just tons of value. I mean, just, ugh. I saw a Bret Hart five timers black PSA nine sell for like $60. Uh, you know, the rock orange, like probably PSA nine or 10 for like 120 bucks. All the, all of those tops parallels have just crashed. And it's, it's, you know, like I said in another video, it's just great as a buyer. Um, I have my Becky Lynch 21 gold listed at like 150 bucks. It hasn't sold BGS nine five. I think I paid like two something for it. It's just wild. How, um, I think there's still demand too. That's the thing is I think people just don't have money. Uh, I think, you know, and um, understandably so. It's just like, it's just, it is what it is. And um, yeah, you just have to, we just have to adjust for that as, as sellers. So, um, so yeah, but yeah, PC wise, collection wise, awesome cards, happy to have them. Um, yeah, and I think that's kind of the, the pickups uh, for the past few weeks. There are some others that I just, you know, I just didn't have time to grab every single card, but, um, but yeah, let's look at some, uh, what was I going to do next? Now I forgot. Um, oh yeah, the questions. Okay. Let me scroll here. Um, all right. So the first question I asked, this was about a week ago. I asked, what card category are you enjoying the most? And we had non-sport Star Wars Marvel uh, leading the way. And, you know, these are small sample size, you know, anywhere from like seven to 10 votes on most of these, but hopefully that'll grow over time as as people uh, get more interested, but uh, we had non-sport lead the way at 50%, TC, uh, TCG 17%, vintage sports got a vote and wrestling got a vote. So a little bit of, and that would reflect for me as well what I, you know, again, <laughs> extremely small sample size, but that would reflect kind of what I'm seeing as well. Uh, the next question was, if you could only spend your trading card hobby dollars on one of these subjects, who would you feel most comfortable holding for the long term? Uh, we had Spider-Man with zero votes, Darth Vader with a vote, Mickey Mantle got a couple votes, Tom Brady led the way with 43%, and Black Lotus had a vote as well. So Brady, Mantle, and then Darth Vader, and the Black Lotus bringing up the rear. Um, that's interesting to me, and I think I would probably disagree. Uh, obviously, Brady's the GOAT, um, but if you're taking into account... Um, like what you're gonna have to pay, I would probably I would probably lean towards mantle. Well, just I don't I don't do Marvel, so I'm just gonna keep Spider Man on the side. But I would probably I would probably lean towards mantle or the Black Lotus. Um, it's the vintage stuff, and especially in baseball, has just even through these like this absolute just uh you know retrace of all cards the vintage stuff has really held strong and not only just in terms of price but also in terms of liquidity at least that's what i've personally experienced like if i've needed to sell a card here or there i just put up a vintage card and it's pretty much gone instantly even if it's at a price that's you know five ten fifteen percent less than than it was a little while ago so i don't know with brady I can't really speak to that as a seller just because I don't have any cards. I've sold them all uh, like a year ago. Um, but I just feel like his stuff is still relatively expensive, you know, uh, compared to what you could get in like Peyton Manning or, um, you know, even like, you know, if you can get a Ray Lewis 2010 Finest Gold for like $25. Um, and, you know, a Brady is going to be like, I don't know what, I, I really don't know. I, I would assume several, several hundred. So at like 50 to 1, 40 to 1, 30 to 1, I'm just not sure if that's where I would want to be price-wise. But that's just, just my opinion. Um, all right. What is your general collecting strategy? What is your general collecting strategy was the next question. 
Um, the leader on that one was save up to buy the cards I want most. I would probably, I think that's a pretty good strategy as well. And it's something I've been trying to focus on a little bit more. And I like to call those cards aspirational cards. And I actually just picked up one recently. And that'll be probably a big focus of next week's episode. Um, just in terms of like targeting a card, saving up your cash, uh, and then getting said card. I think there's something really to be said for that rather than just like this hyper, you know, active approach, which I tend to engage in a lot. Um, next was pick up value options and sell them to buy cards. I want more. I definitely do a lot of that. I mean, you can see that here with, uh, like take for example, I mean, this was a card I paid $20 for. This Ray Lewis was a card here I paid like $25 or $30 for. Even selling it for $80, which I feel is like super underpriced, um, is still, you know, still easy double up. Now, you don't get to do that all the time, obviously, especially in a market like this. But, you know, I just, I sold one of these, the gold for uh, SGC.5 for 98 That was, I definitely took a loss on that. I probably paid like 120 raw for it, graded at 140 so I'm losing, you know, losing money there. But then I was able to buy, you know, these two raw cards for, um, for like, I think it was less than 200. So I'll get both these graded and then def I can easily sell, or I can definitely sell the gold because I've had five copies. I'll probably keep the orange. Um, you know, these Lindor cards, those are just for me. Nobody's gonna care about those. Um, this, I don't know if I could even, I might be able to make money on that if I wanted to, but it's, it's gonna end up being a PC card. But you know, that's just kind of, you know, I like that sort of that hybrid approach of um, buy stuff that you want to collect, but you know, don't be afraid to sell your collection to add, you know, other items to your collection. So, um, and then a couple other options, focus on specific players, characters, categories, get a vote, grade raw cards, sell some, keep some. I like to do that as well. And then freestyle, just buy, sell whatever feels right at the time. Got a vote. Okay. Um, next question. How many cards are you going to buy this weekend? Uh, Leading the way at 56% was hopefully none, but probably a few. So definitely got some uh, card card uh, card addicted individuals out there. I definitely identify with that. Um, next was one to three with 22%, and then as many as I can afford at 22%. All right. Um, okay. Uh, generally speaking, what app what attribute do you consider most important when selecting a card to purchase or collect? I thought this was super interesting. Um, so I, I had five options and only two got votes. So featured subject, scarcity, brand or card type, price or continuity. Uh, featured subject got 43%. So player, character, place, thing, whatever. And then scarcity got 57%. Very interesting. And I think I would agree. Um, I think I would agree most for the most part. Obviously, I think for everybody, it's probably a combination of all those things. Um, but let's just kind of look here. Let me see. All right, I can just kind of rattle this off. So this, uh, this is probably more about... Is this more about subject or scarcity? Um, this is more. This is more about scarcity, even though I like Sammy. This is more about card type, the gold, and it's about it's about all the things again. It's about, I like Jimmy, I like the brand, I like all that, but it's mostly about the fact that it's a gold. Um, this is the card type, gold. This is. Probably, this is probably, this is probably scarcity and then subject. This is going to be, gosh, uh, so the orange is scarcity and I think the gold is probably leading with card type. The red is scarcity. This is scarcity. These are card type. Um, this is card type. This is card type. This is, man, I'm really coming in with a lot of card types here. This is, 
Because when I say subject, it would be like, okay, did I buy this because it's a Mookie Betts card? Because Mookie, mostly because it's Mookie Betts card. No, I didn't. I bought it mostly because, huh, there's a little bit of continuity there just because I like high tech from Star Wars. Um, a little bit of price there. I don't know. What about this one? This is, again, it's mostly card type. If this was the Ray Lewis Black out of 199 from 2010 or 2011, I, I wouldn't have bought it because I don't really care about that type as much. Um, yeah, very interesting though. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards card type, to be honest, which is, I, I yeah, I think I am. Uh, so yeah, I have to think about that a little bit more. That might be a interesting topic to explore for, for another day. So, all right. Uh, let's see, other questions, um, and then just, I posted a question today, it just said, what trading card category that you don't currently collect could you see yourself collecting in the future, Marvel, Star Wars, modern sports, vintage sports, other sports, so we'll talk more about that next week, but uh, yeah, a lot of interesting, a lot of interesting results there, thanks for everybody that voted, definitely keep an eye out for those questions in, in future, uh, um, future weeks, and we'll, we'll get some more of those, so just, uh, you know, sell, uh, selling has been down a little bit. Um, you know, buying has been, you know, pretty, pretty, you know, relatively slow as well, but you know, still having fun. Yeah. I can't complain too much. A lot of good cards added to the PC waiting on two SGC submissions that hopefully we'll be getting back like in the next few days. So that'd be fun about 40, 40 some cards or more. So we'll see about that. But but yeah, all in all, it's been a, it's just been a blast. Um, yeah, and I, I think I'm going to close it out, close it out there. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope you'll take care of yourselves, and then we'll see you again soon. Later.